if it comes up, because, you know, the class is always open for questions, anytime, anytime. So, but uh, to have a class dedicated to questions, and also, you know, if we don't have that much, I got a lesson here that we'll take off on and go. So, questions. What questions do you have that you would like to raise for discussion this morning? It doesn't have to be about any of our lessons, uh, although it can be if you like, it's, 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 it's open. What would you like to ask and discuss? That many, huh? All right. No, I, I think the last question. I'll start with a little bit. like child life. Questions I have around kids either. No, that's all right. There, there are no inappropriate questions. Why did she get married? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to take it up with God. I can't answer that. <laughs> yeah. Will they be able to see us on earth? Okay. Good question. Do people in heaven see us on earth? Anybody have any ideas on that? I would say yes. And the reason being is sometimes on earth we need closure. And I think God would be able to let, if we're in heaven, see us down here. Maybe even sometimes just kind of like put a bug in our ear. Hey, I'm coming. I'm here. I'm in heaven. Just to bring closure to everybody. Because it's kind of happening to So I really think that. So, uh, but what I'm hearing is it's more God letting you know. God letting them see. Letting us know. Okay. Okay. All right. What else? And there are other ideas on that. Yeah, you got the rich man and Lazarus, where you know the rich man is in hell and he sees Lazarus. It doesn't say that Lazarus saw him. Um, but once again, if you can see from hell, from hell to heaven, can you not, you know, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's asking God for that. And God said, Lazarus ain't got time to fool with you, you know, basically. And, uh, and I know there are scriptures that imply I'm thinking of Revelation 5, 4 or 5, the souls under the altar, and they're crying out, you know, when are you going to avenge us? So how are we going to know And if God doesn't tell us? So I, I think I would say in general, no. But I say in general because I think there are times in which the Lord sees a specific need that he will allow, now whether it is the actual person coming to us, because we all, we all have heard of people that have been visited, you know, after so-and-so died, I saw them, we, Teresa and I had someone telling us a, a, an example of that a couple of months ago. Uh, Even if it's in a dream, it's so vivid, it can't be nothing. Really. Yeah, and uh, I know uh, J.B. Phillips, who wrote a version of the Bible, uh, Philip's translation. Uh, he recounts, uh, I think it was J.R. Tolkien, after he died, coming to him one night and smoking a pipe and everything, which Tolkien did all his life. Or C.S. Lewis, no, it was C.S. Lewis that came to him. And said, it's all quite true, you know. That was all he said. And Phillips believes that that was a true visitation. Now, you can have a, 
a hundred variations of whether that is true or not. You know, what did he eat that night? Was it a really bad pizza or something? And, yeah. Here's your sign. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I, I think that in looking at this, can we have a blanket statement? I don't think we can, other than no, I don't believe. I, I, I don't think my parents who are in heaven are saying, Lord, I, I, I thought I raised him better than that, you know. Uh, but I, I, I don't. If we need him, I think God will let him know. Yeah. I, I think if, if, if the necessity is there, I think the Lord can. I, the only blanket I could give is that I'd say no, because in heaven there's no sorrow, there's no pain, there's no hurt, there are no tears. And so if it was a blanket that he, that he allows people in heaven to see everything, we then get to the question, but what if they see their children lost? And, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So I think most likely no, but I think that there are times in which God may very well allow something to impress our minds over a particular issue that lets us know um, that it's okay. This person is okay. So, uh, any other ideas on this? Uh, interesting and, and question that I think everybody has raised at some point in their life as a Christian. Um, so, it's, it's, a, it's, not, it's not a child's question. It's a, it's a good question. I don't know if that gives you a satisfactory answer or not. Well, can I give a message to somebody? Not directly, but... I would say you could now how he I handles it. You know, yeah, when you know when you put it through Jesus, you know, you leave it in God's hands to let them know it. And certainly I think there is joy in the presence of the angels of heaven over one soul that is saved. I think initially that is God's rejoicing, but at the same time Well don't everybody rejoice in heaven, is what I say? I would I would think. I, and that's what I'm that's what I'm getting to. That's why I was is that, you yeah, is that God that. rejoices. And, and that joy flows out over all those who have been redeemed that are in, that are in heaven. So um, it's one of those things that Scripture is not real clear on. But I think the Lord, if someone is in heaven, and I, I've, I've thought about this before, and if they do know, that people are lost, suffering, hurting, whatever, because of sin, or under the judgment of God because of sin, they would praise God for his justice and his holiness. So what people in heaven see of earth is 
filtered, if you will, that's probably not the right term, but filtered, if you will, through Jesus Christ and the nature of God, which is perfect holiness, perfect righteousness. And I think in, in heaven, people who see other people that are not there, then thank God, praise God for your justice and righteousness. It sounds very cruel and hard to say that, but we have to always validate the justice and holiness of God. And I think the Lord in the joys, and certainly there's not, the fact that people are saved is not the only reason for joy in heaven. So uh, it's possible but it all flows through Christ and validates the holiness and justice and the will of God. So um, you can certainly tell the Lord, you know, let them know I'm coming, I, you know, type thing. Um, now whether he tells them or how he tells them, I, I, you know, it's up to him. But, uh, yeah. So Which? Which he's allowed to communicate to Saul about mm -hmm. the coming defeat. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like God allowed Samuel to be able to speak to Saul even though Samuel had already died. Yeah. Uh, but it's a particular situation mm -hmm. that that's and, and Samuel says, why have you troubled me? You know, yeah. why are you bother me? I'm in perfect bliss. Why are you bothering me by junk down here? Uh, but yeah, I think that's one of those specific examples in which God intervenes. It's all part of, of his plan that he sees unfolding. And the, the acknowledgement of Saul's defeat was certainly part of the plan of getting Saul out of the way, David coming on, all of these things. Um, but I think that it was, you know, scriptures like that, passages like that, uh, lead me to believe that it's possible in particular circumstances if God sees fit. By and large, though, no, I would say. Good discussion on that. Other points? Ready to move on? Okay. Yeah, and I'd have to say to that, uh, no, they don't become angels. We're better than angels. Yeah, we're, we're, we're better than angels. We have received the holiness of God by salvation and grace. So in that sense, we are, you know, to say there's another angel in heaven. No, you got a saved soul. And when we, a little bit further into chapter 12 of Hebrews, uh, the writer there says, look at what you have right now as a believer. And we are, we are above angels now. Because angels desire to look into what we got, as Peter tells us, you know. No, they've had, they, they had theirs and, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> huh? Yes, they were already there. So, purpose of angels, I think, essentially, they were created for the purposes of God. Which sounds like, yeah, that's a cop-out answer. But, in actuality, 
being created for the purposes of God <coughs> involves all that's involved with salvation, individuals on earth, the outworking of God's providences, the outworking of God's plan. We read of, uh, who is it? Um, Michael and Daniel warring against the, the, the demon influence in Persia. Uh, we have these type of things that are given to us in scripture. So I think the, the purpose of angels being created is to serve the purposes of God. Part of that is also that they, they, they worship, they glorify God in heaven for who he is. And they are the servants for those who are to be saved. How all of that works out goes back to that providence, the plan of God, and so forth. They were originally created. Isaiah chapter 14 uh, tells us that there was one of them named Lucifer who was an archangel who decided he wasn't satisfied with who he was. He wanted the whole show. He wanted to be God. And it was that pride that led to his rebellion that caused him to be cast out of heaven and those who followed him. That was the, the opportunity for them to choose to be saved, to be to be in heaven or not. Uh, not necessarily saved because they weren't lost and came back. They had the opportunity to remain in heaven or not. There were many that chose to remain in heaven. There were some who chose not and they were cast <coughs> out. Huh? No. Yeah. A third and ever. I, yep. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know how many angels there are. So yeah, um, I'd say a bunch. You know, uh, innumerable company of angels and a third of that. You know. Yeah. 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 What kind of angels they were? Huh? What, what kind of angels they were? They got cast out. Seraphim, uh, cherubim, they got two different things anyway. Could have been. I, I, I don't know. Uh, scripture's not real clear on that. So uh, it could have been any number. He was an archangel, so I imagine um, any below him, you know, which would be some of the other layers, cherubim, seraphim, angels, yeah. uh, you know, that list. And there are, there does seem to be orders or uh, a hierarchy in the sense of orders. I don't think it's like one commands another one and so forth because there's not but one commander and that's God. But I think there are orders of angels that God has for his purposes that he has used throughout history. I don't think there's a great number of archangels where we're not told but of just a few um, in scripture. I think there are angels that watch over us that the Lord uses. Um, I know the old the old statement, you know, God God looks after fools and drunks. Um, hey, watch this. Huh? Hey, watch this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, watch this. You know, and the Lord says, "Okay, let me let me help this." Uh, and I have been both. So I think that uh, God does look after us. Now, does that mean that we have an, an angel that is our buddy that stands right beside us? We, we talk to our angel. No, we talk to Jesus. We seek God. Um, it's not, it's not an angelic relationship with humans that is personal. They serve us because they have been told to serve us. It's not because, well, I'm going to look after Teresa because I know that the husband she's got is a real issue, and I'm going to send an angel to look after her. And he's going to help her. He's going to, no, no. It's, it's you know, it's, it's not a personal thing like that. It's, she is a child of God. Protect this child of God would be the order. And angels are not our, our buddies. Angels are not our friends. 
in the way that we think of buddies and friends. Once again, it's a whole different realm when you look at the spiritual. Do they love us? Do they care about us? Yeah, they're, they're very interested in who we are. Because I think that, you know, they, they wonder how is it that we can be in the very presence of ultimate holiness because they obviously see who we are. And so salvation is something that angels do not share in. They look, they, they, they are interested in it. But salvation is something that is, is reserved for human beings because we are the ones that God created with a will to choose. And that one of the, another one of the things that separates us from, from angels, angels don't have a will now to say, no, I ain't going to do that. Uh, because they don't have an option to rebel against God. They did. At one point, they did. I think that that period of time, whenever that was, uh, just like with humanity, there is a period of time where you have an option to believe or not but it reaches a point to where that's settled. And on one end, for us, you believe and are saved and are eternally secure. On the other end, you die. You don't have an option at that point. And ever what the time frame was for the angelic beings, once they had that time frame reached, and I think it culminated in the rebellion of Lucifer, once again, the Bible is not totally clear. But it seems that after Lucifer was cast out and that rebellion was dealt with, angels have not ever rebelled since. And so I think their choice, and seeing how they're not time limited beings, their choice. Is, is forever. They can't go back and undo that choice that they made. Would be my feeling. They made their decisions you think would be good. Huh? They made their decisions you think would be good. They served, they decided to serve God. Mm -hmm. And that's their job. Yeah. And so that's why I say that they they don't they don't rebel against God now. Were they one of us at one time? Yeah. No. No, they are, they are completely different created being. Good question. A different created being. Uh, as Hebrews chapter 2 tells us, we were created a little lower than the angels. So there is there's God, there is the angelic realm, and there is the human realm. Now within the angelic realm, you have, and I'm talking angelic in the sense of spiritual beings, you have principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world, which is made up of the fallen angels. And you also have angels that serve God. That's the, the spiritual realm. Beneath that is the realm of humanity, flesh and blood people, us. So we're, we're time limited. We're bound by limitations that angels don't have. They can appear, disappear, walk, walk through walls, all, all this type of stuff, you know. Now, there's been people who have tried to run through some walls, but, you know, uh, generally that doesn't work out too well for them. So we're, we're time-limited beings. We're physically limited beings. Uh, angels are, are spiritual beings. They don't have to eat. They don't have to sleep. None of that. They, they live according to the power of God. And so that's, that's a whole nother level. We've got to eat and sleep and so forth and so on until we reach a glorified body, which happens at the resurrection. And at that point, we become, a, we have a spiritual body. And what we have now 
transforms into a spiritual body like our Lord Jesus' body. He could appear, disappear, but he could eat fish. He did it after his resurrection. So, um, but, but no, they're not, they're not us. So there's, there's, there's obviously angels that are charged with the... It's almost like they can see his, his, his pleasure and then they just go out. It ain't even a matter of... Yeah, yeah. He, they don't have to get a memo. It, it, you know. um, and we talk about traveling at the speed of light. They travel at the speed of God. So he's everywhere present at one time. And, but they are sent. Now, they enter time limitations of the world in accomplishing God's will. The reason I say that, remember Daniel's prayer, chapter 9? He set out to pray, and the angel came to him and said, Your prayer was heard three weeks ago. The answer went out. But I had to go deal with this and this and this. Angels enter into our time limitations, but they are not time limited. Uh, I think C.S. Lewis in one of his books talks about angels and he says that uh, when that angel appeared in, in the story that is written, I can't even remember the story now, but the angel seemed to be drifting, moving, and they wanted to know why. And he said, because angels are not bound. If an angel stopped, the world would just run on past them because they can actually stop. They're not bound by gravity. They're not bound by centrifugal force. They, they operate on a whole different spiritual level. So an angel uh, can stop and the whole world pass right on. We can't, we can't stop like that. You know, they can't. Do I think there are demons? Yeah. Yes, I think, I think that Satan um, has his minions. Uh, they are demons. Uh, and they operate at his will within the confines of the will of God. But they do operate. I think there are demons. We read of them in Scripture. You know, Jesus casting demons out. And, you know, 2,000 pigs got possessed and ran down to the river, I mean, to the, to the Sea of Galilee and drowned themselves out of that one person. So there's, there's numerous... When preachers got beat up in the river. Huh? When preachers got beat up, they were trying to cast them out. So you know, yeah, Jesus, yeah. We don't know you. Thinking... Jesus we know. Paul we know. You we don't know. And... Uh, I, I, I saw something on, I, th I think it was Prime TV the other day. Uh, and it was a documentary on the, the witch of and I think it's Cross something in Australia back in the 50s. And this woman, I don't encourage you to, to watch it. I, you know, I had, I had to pray about it after I watched it. And I had to pray while I was watching it. Uh, she invited darkness into her life. From a child, she said, she loved darkness and she invited darkness into her life. And all through her life, she sought to be empowered by dark, what she called dark forces. I think these were demons. I think this woman, she drew pictures of them, all this that she had seen in her trances. Um, and they were horrendous looking beings, 
but she was drawn to them. And I think that's an interest, what, one of the things that was interesting about that. You know, if people could see the devil for what he was, without Jesus Christ, they would still be drawn to him. This woman was drawn to the horrible creatures that she saw in her, in her trances. She welcomed the sight and the visitation of them. And it really revealed the depth that Satan can penetrate an individual. So yeah, I think there are demons. They are under the control, if you will, prince powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, Ephesians chapter 6. I think they are his demons, his forces. They operate in any numbers of ways, uh, influencing, possessing, all of these different things. But they are all ultimately under the control and the limitation of God because angels are called into the very presence of God in heaven. Job chapter 1 and chapter 2 where God questions Satan himself. He said, you seen Job? And the natural question would, the answer would be, well, why not? You're glorious and you're wonderful. No, you let me at him. He'll cuss you. Satan never got the point. He still thinks he can win. That's why we'll have Battle of Armageddon. That's why we'll have the war at the end of the millennium. He still thinks he can win. He's that deceived in his arrogance. Um, but yeah, there are demons. Do you think um, Satan has caused some of our natural disasters or that people want to blame God for all the bad that happened? Do you think that God allowed him to do some of these disasters that he did? Um, couple of ways of looking at that. Um, can Satan influence people to do things that result in natural disasters? I think he can. I think he does. Uh, huh? Yeah? World War II, World War One. I, you need to go right on down the line. You know, Civil War, all of that. Um, I think, I think he does. I also think that the Lord uses natural disasters to call to us through that. Even though Satan may have influenced man, look, we'll we'll take climate change. Supposing that man has created climate change. Uh, it would be under the influence of evil forces for our greed, our arrogance, our rebellion, those types of things. We have done things to this earth that we may not be able to recover from. Um, but I think the Lord uses those to call to us when he allows that to happen. Uh, and I'm thinking of, you remember when uh, Katrina came into New Orleans and devastated the city? There was some preacher that NPR, I think it was, interviewed. Now, why they decided, you know, evidently a little local preacher, you know, not some big name, but just some local guy. And they asked him, said, do you think this is a, a, a judgment from God? And he said, ma'am, he said, if God was judging America, it'd be a whole lot more than New Orleans that would get destroyed. You know, so I thought he had a pretty good witness and testimony with that answer. They didn't ask him any more questions. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, think, I think the Lord allows Satan to influence mankind to hurt themselves. Because he wants mankind to fail. He wants this earth to be depopulated. His ultimate goal is for all of us to die and nobody be able to serve God. That's what he wants. And 
I think at the same time, God is saying, look at what's happening. Do you not realize that there's another path? Um, so I think there's, there's a blending. I can't, in my own mind, I can't be a whole lot more clear than that. But, uh, but yeah, I think Satan does influence people to create catastrophes. The nuclear plant in, in Ukraine, if that blows up, and it will, it's the largest nuclear facility in Europe, so the, the result of that will be devastating to a number of people and things, and that is clearly the result of man's anger, hatred, and greed, which is a result of Satan. So, so yeah, I can, I can see in that way, is the Lord involved with it? He's allowing it, he's allowing it to happen, if it happens. And once again, it's a testimony for us to realize if you allow greed, anger, hatred, arrogance, all these things to control you, this is what happens when you allow that. You know, it's a witness to us in that at the same time. Excellent questions, y'all. This is good. Um, other questions? Other statements? Yeah. Well, I think Wrong place, wrong time. Exactly. Yeah. Think, Kids being killed. You know. Yes. And I think that's, uh, you know, well, you think about abortion too. You know. Um, so I think, yes, you're right as far as the key influence of those things. Yeah. So yeah. It might not be the disaster itself, but there's a lot of things that factor into that disaster. You know, it's mm -hmm. like a wildfire, you know, uh, uh, arsonist goes out and sets something on fire. There you go. I think definitely so. It is, it is, going back to the show that I saw, uh, it is, it is untelling the depth of evil that humans will welcome into their lives. This woman welcomed all that she had and experienced. Well, they, they, they worship Satan like we worship God. She did, there's, yes. There's groups out there that need to worship Satan. Don't be alarmed. Yeah. to stop. Um, next week, David is going to be teaching class. Teresa and I are going to be going to Missouri to see Ellen, Carlos, and the kids. Uh, so we will not be here next weekend, but David has an excellent message uh, lesson prepared, I'm sure. So y'all please be here for that, and, um, and we'll see you on the 25th. Thank you.